Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are in this beautiful world. Whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin Family Channel. Today, again, walking and talking about Bitcoin blockchain and life on this amazing beach here in Phuket. Very early this morning, I have five amazing Bitcoin charts. Of course, a trading tip. Of course, a travel tip. Yes, some massive news about a cop and some Bitcoins. He could have been a millionaire, but what did he do wrong? And of course, answering one of the questions of one of the followers. Let's quickly jump into the charts first to show you exactly what we are doing as we had a beautiful weekly close. We only saw 17 candles before in Bitcoin's history at this level, guys. So that's a beautiful close. Let's quickly jump into the charts to show you exactly what I mean. Bam. The first chart today, guys, is of course this weekly chart. Look how beautiful the weekly candle there, this one, that green one, that what opened at 48,300 and had a high of 52,800 and a low of 47,700, but it closed at 52,130. This is a very beautiful moment for Bitcoin as there were only like 17 candles in Bitcoin's history that closed at this level. This is very bullish, guys. 52K closing weekly candle. The new candle, of course, just opened. We have six days and 23 hours to see where this one will be heading. Hopefully, it will be heading to that 60K level that I expect. But let's quickly jump into other charts to zoom out and show you exactly what my opinion is about Bitcoin at the moment. This one is not zoomed out, but zoomed in, guys. You can see the yellow block over there. That is where all the liquidity is. You know, that is where people are willing to sell their Bitcoins. That's between 50 and 53K. So we need to go there with the price to fill, you know, those selling bits of those people over there. Huge liquidity on that block. If we break that liquidity, we buy up all that volume over there, we have the possibility to grow further to even 60K. Beautiful chart. If we look at this one, this Bitcoin Relative Strength Index, the RSI, you can see how beautiful we now have the first orange dot the first orange dot guys look to the left on this chart look what happened every time in the bull market when we saw the first orange dot that is a very bullish moment traditionally of course aside of the COVID crash in 2019 after the yellow orange dots we go up we go up and form red dots this is very bullish. This is the beautiful chart of Plan B, of course, but, this, but it is telling you exactly the market value divided by the realized value, and that is what we refer to the MVRV score. And when this dot turns orange in the past, we know we are gonna go higher and higher and higher till we have a couple of red dots near that top over there, guys. Very interesting, but very important chart. This chart I already shared last week, guys. I told you, hey, it is very important if we close a candle above this 0.618 uh, Fibonacci level. And that is exactly what we did. We closed a weekly candle above that 0.618 Fibonacci level. This is the first time in Bitcoin history that we have done this before the halving. Look on this chart. It happened every time after the halving or during the halving. We are now a few weeks ahead, let's say eight weeks ahead almost, because normally it only happens during or after the halving, guys. We are ahead of the curve, which is very interesting to see. Let's see if we stay ahead of the curve throughout the whole Bitcoin bull market. But this, very bullish in my honest opinion, because every time in history, when we flipped that level of 0.618, we only went up from there. Because the other moments, we had resistance at the level. You can see the first time over there, resistance, we fell down. And then we went up in the bull market. The second time, we had resistance there at that 14K, and we fell down, and then we went up again. Now this time, yes, there was resistance, but we broke it and we closed the candle above this. That is, of course, because of all the liquidity coming into the market of the spot ETFs. Millions a day. Let's see how this will influence the rest of this four-year cycle. Also on this chart, you can see exactly the same. We have been in this channel, this green channel that you can see over there, for over a year, moving in between it. Coming to the bottom, going to the top, coming to the bottom, going to the top. The moment you break out of these channels, the target should be somewhere about the width of this channel. And if you put the arrow of the width of this channel on top of the breakout, 
we can see we are even going to target 70k plus. So normally when we break out of these huge channels that we've been in for a year, this will lead to a massive pump again. 70k, that would mean a new all-time high. Is it going to happen in 2024? I don't know. Normally I would say we would break 70k towards the end of this year and then in 2025 go even higher. But at this moment we are ahead of the curve. So yes, maybe we could even break that 70k level earlier than the end of the year. And maybe even go above 100k at the end of the year, but that doesn't really matter. I told you all to buy Bitcoin around 20k, not even worse, I told you all to buy around 3k in 2019 already. I told you to go all in when I went all in at $800, $900 per Bitcoin. I truly believe we will go much higher than 100k and that we will reach these levels of 120k, 130k easily if we are ahead of the curve and just keep going up like we're going up at the moment. I found on Twitter, uh, if you want to analyze it a little more, pause it and check it for yourself. Then we have this chart. This chart is just showing you how ridiculous it is that people are saying, yes, all that stuff is already calculated in. Yes, we are almost around the top. Look to the left, 2012 bull market. 2016 bull market, 2020 bull market. Now we have the market of 2024. We can see exactly where we are at the moment. And you don't think that we will create a shitload of green candles to the top over there? Of course we will. I don't believe that we will stay in this bottom area. I believe 100K should be easily reachable. And if we get even more bullish, yes, higher prices would be reachable as well. But yes, I prefer to be a little bit more cautious, a little bit more bearish, because I'm already happy with 100K or 120K or 150K, all good to me, guys. I don't need 500K and you all don't need 500K. We have time enough to 2030 to create that 500K level or million level for Bitcoin. On this chart, you can see the short-term HODL net realized profit loss. Uh, we are at the moment at a level of 647 million. This level, the last time we reached this level was somewhere in September, 2021. So that's September, 2021 when we reached that level, guys. That's a very high level. The time before that was during the first peak of that bull market in 2021. And the last time was somewhere there, that green second top in 2021. So we are now already in a short-term HODL net realized profit loss at the level that we were during the peak of the previous bull market. This is very interesting. Also here showing us we are ahead of the curve. Yes, this green area can go a shitload higher and that means the price will go a shitload higher as well. Pause the video to analyze it a little bit more. I find these charts always on Glassnode. I like Glassnode. You can go into a depth, deep dive into all the Bitcoin numbers, which is always important. It's not only the price, but it's everything else that's happening as well. So how many short-term hodlers, how many are on profit, how many long-term hodlers, how many are on loss, all of these data combined show you exactly where we are in Bitcoin. The more short-term holders will be in profit, the less selling pressure they will have. They won't need to sell the Bitcoins. They will all be having profits. And then the Bitcoin price goes higher and higher and higher. And there is always then 10% of those people that will only start to buy when Bitcoin is above 100K. Then Bitcoin drops below 100K. And then you have a lot of short-term holders that will be in loss. Then the numbers will change. And when the short-term hodlers will turn into loss, that is the moment that we also have an indication, hey, that's the bull market top. Those people starting to have loss, they will start to sell, 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 and then that will have this effect on all the rest of the market and they all start to sell. So very interesting chart. I haven't been this early before. I think it's around seven o'clock and the beach is really busy already. It's like a lot of people doing sports, walking, all these activities. That is also what I like about Thailand. But that should belong to the travel tip. I hope you really enjoyed these charts, guys. Amazing charts again, showing amazing volume, amazing timing just before the halving. The close of 52,103 on the weekly chart happened only 17 times before in history in the history of Bitcoin. It's a very bullish sign. You are closing above this level. I truly believe that 61K will be the next target. And from that moment, yes, of course, we can have a correction, a pullback, a dip, a crash, or whatever, however you want to refer to it. Yes, that can always happen. And if it is 10% or 20% or even 30%, it doesn't even matter. That is all part of a bull market. It is not only up, it's going up, it's going down, it's going up, 
coming down and slowly creating a new all-time high somewhere in 2025. Still my prediction, bull market up 2025. Yes, we will break the previous all-time high now in 2024 towards the end. So halving till December, we will be above 70K and the rest will be playing out in 2025. Patience, patience is very important in this industry. The trading tip for today, guys, is that you need to start and educate yourselves on the differences between spot trading, spot margin trading, or futures trading. Because there is a shitload of AML, KYC regulations going to go happen to all these exchanges, just like Bybit. It's gonna to happen to all the exchanges in whole Europe and all other Western countries. So you need to understand which other products on that exchange you still are allowed to use. For example, the Netherlands, Bybit needs to stop using all the derivatives. These are all the high risk uh, exchange possibilities when it comes to trading Bitcoin. But you can still do a spot margin which means you can still borrow Bitcoins to make a bigger trading position. So instead of one Bitcoin, you can trade up to 10 Bitcoins by only investing one Bitcoin with a spot margin trade. So that's still possible to trade with bigger amounts, but you can't use derivatives anymore. You need to know the difference between spot trading, spot margin trading, and all those futures products like derivatives and inverse perpetual. If you want to know more about this, sign up to our free Telegram groups where I will post a beautiful article today on the differences between those three versions of trading. Because you really need to understand what will be available for you guys in the Netherlands, but also in Germany, soon maybe France, Spain and other countries, because all these exchanges will be tapped on their fingers because of the whole Mika regulations and all the shit show that now again uh, the European Union is putting on their citizens, guys. So you just need to be prepared and educate yourselves on the differences between all these options that you can use on an exchange. And so that's the trading tip today. If you don't want to Google, sign up to the Bitcoin Family Telegram group and you will find a beautiful article about the differences between those and how you can use them to keep trading, for example, on Bybit. If you want to sign up to Bybit, use the link down below because you can still get a bonus up to 30K, $30 for just signing up and many more cool stuff happening now on Bybit. If you want to trade decentralized, use the link to Apex Pro, the best decentralized exchange out there. It's just the best of the best. I'm only sharing the best of the best. Let's quickly jump into the travel tip. The travel tip for today, guys, is for all those people that want to travel a little bit longer. Just not for the people that want to go on holiday for two weeks because their boss only allows them to go on holiday for two weeks. I'm talking about the people that really want to have this freedom lifestyle that, for example, me and my family are living. For those people that want to travel longer, I think this is a very good travel tip. You need to always focus on yearly rental agreements because if you take a yearly rental agreement, the price monthly will drop tremendously. You will be renting way cheaper than if you do a monthly agreement. Sometimes it's even so cheap that instead of like doing three months, for example, December, January, February, would be almost as expensive as if you do a full year. So always check out what the yearly price is because even if you only stay three to four months, if the price is the same as a normal three month rental, you can then use those other nine months to make profit because then you have the same investment, but then you can re-rent that house again to other people. So the travel tip for today is always compare the yearly price with the monthly price. And if the calculations are okay, and if you have a big advantage on the yearly price, then make sure that your contract allows it that you sublease or subrent the house to other people. And if you play that game well, you are even staying for free yourself. Because those three months that you're staying there, won't compare to the revenue you could be making in those nine months. Yes, it is a little bit of a hassle. I need to agree with that. But for a lot of people that think that traveling is always expensive, no, it will cost you a little bit more time to make it cheap. So it's very simple. Always compare the yearly rent with the monthly rent, guys. And if that yearly rent is a little bit more profitable, then always take the yearly rental contract. But make sure that the rental contract will allow you to sublease or subrent your apartment or house to other people when you're not there. That was a travel tip for today. Let's quickly jump now into the next part. 
turning around guys for the next part the next part is answering a question of one of the followers wow the sun really comes up brightly it's really early uh, the answering of the question I, I will answer two questions today so that's really cool one of the questions is Didi what will happen to Bitcoin if the war in Ukraine will become worse I don't think anything will happen to Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin has a very strong position in all the world, not just being affected by Ukraine or Russia or China or the United States or Europe. It belongs to everyone and the price has become very stable. And always in situations of war, the rich people, the 1% of the rich people of the world, will always store their capital a very safe store of values. And of course, that used to be gold, but nowadays they are understanding the digital gold of the 21st century, Bitcoin. And it's now very simple for them to start to hedge their capital into Bitcoin because of all those spot ETFs. So all those rich people know how to play this game. When there is uncertainty on the market because of war or economical crises or whatever, they will always store the biggest part of their capital in this store of values, this safe store of values. They want to protect their capital against inflation and everything else. So that's why they use store of value assets, like gold or any other precious metals, or for example, no, Bitcoin. I believe Bitcoin will take a bigger role in this every time again and again and again. And that is not just because of Ukraine, but because the US is putting US sanctions on all these countries that are in war. So all these countries can't use dollars anymore for import and export. So they need to find something else that they can use to import and export. I think even Bitcoin there is going to be a bigger role every time again and again. Because internationally, a lot of countries already do business with each other by transacting Bitcoin. Bitcoin is not that multi-level thing or that cheap asset anymore what you thought of this. It's integrated in the complete international economy already. It's there. It's there for everyone to use. Now even the richest of the richest can safely accumulate Bitcoin through a spot ETF. We are steps further than most of you people still think. I think Bitcoin is the most powerful that people will use during these wars. So just imagine that you're living in Ukraine or Russia and there's a huge war in your part of the country. The bank buildings are all like blown up. You can't access your money anymore because of the business bank buildings. The only way for you to escape that country at that moment is book a flight and pay it with Bitcoin. Eat dinners as restaurants that accept Bitcoin because they can't stop you using Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is a very powerful tool even in these moments of war. The people that wanted to flat Ukraine in the beginning of the war, the only one that were able to do that were those that had cryptocurrency. They could flat the border to Poland and there exchange their Bitcoins into money that they can use to eat. They couldn't do that with their bank account because they were all closed because there was a war. Bitcoin stands for be your own bank. And it doesn't matter in what kind of country you live, or what kind of war there is, or what kind of political situation there is, or what kind of crisis there is, you are your own bank and you will always have access to your own capital. That is why Bitcoin stands for be your own bank. You determine what happens with your money. You determine where you spend it, to who you send it, how much you want to send, whenever you want to send it, 24 seven, because Bitcoin never stops working. Bitcoin is a solution for people to escape all that oppressed centralized regimes that are all the cause of these wars. You should start using Bitcoin as your core currency. Withdraw all that money from that regime that is making all those wars. Show them that you are supporting this peaceful revolution by accumulating Bitcoin. Make your bank account empty, fill your Bitcoin wallet, and that is how you fight a peaceful revolution against war, against governments, against central banks, against social credit systems, against a lot of things in this world. Because you are a part of Bitcoin. Be your own bank. The second question I'm gonna answer, guys, was a question from one of the followers. Didi, you still don't have a bank account. What if one of your children now wants a bank account? Which bank account will they open? I really need to laugh about the big question because I don't think my kids want to have a bank account. But let's say one of my daughters get a new boyfriend and a boyfriend will influence her to get a new bank account. I would always tell her to open a Revolut bank account. 
And why? Because I read news today, again about Revolut, that they are now even opening a crypto exchange for more advanced traders. You can already use Revolut to buy Bitcoin and sell Bitcoins in the Revolut banking app. And Revolut is one of the biggest banks out there, guys. The Revolut has more than 30 million users. It's not a small bank. It's one of the biggest banks of the world. And there it's already possible since 2017 with your euros to buy Bitcoins, store them in your app and sell them again back to euros. You can even export some Bitcoins from Revolut uh, to the next place. So Revolut would be the only option. And now especially because they announced that they are going to open a crypto exchange within that model that you can even trade freely. So good morning. morning. You will have very beautiful women now in the screen, guys. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, that was the booty part. So for me, Revolut is the only option that my kids would be allowed to open if it is up to me. But you know, my oldest daughter is 18, the second one is 16, and the youngest one is uh, uh, now 13. Uh, they are all old, old enough to decide for themselves. At the moment, they are very happy still with all the options that the Bitcoin industry is offering them. So for example, my oldest one, Jolie, 18 years old by now, uh, she has, of course, debit cards. She doesn't need a bank anymore. She just goes everywhere she wants in the world and she uses her debit cards. She has a top debit card. She has a Bybit debit card. She has a Crypto.com debit card. She has a Wirex debit card. My kids have these debit cards. And these debit cards do exactly the same that, you, not, that your normal children would do with this uh, bank card. So my kids have never been given access to the banking system. I don't think they even want access, but if they would want access, then I think Revolut would be the only option where they even feel safe because Revolut also supports Bitcoin to the fullest. So that's the second answer to the second question. Now let's jump into the next part. The next part, guys, is talking about the news. I read the most funny news ever this morning. It's from Australia and it's an Aussie cop. Hey mate! <laughs> and this cop stole 81.6 bitcoins during a raid in 2019. And when they did that raid, it was some kind of a raid of some kind of a group of drugs, people, whatever it was in Australia. And this cop saw this hardware wallet. When they were doing the raid, oh shit, that's a hardware wallet. Ah, probably my colleagues don't know what it is. Hmm, they think it's a USB stick. So yeah, let them confiscate it. And I will go into that room where they, you know, store all that stuff that we confiscated. And I will empty that ledger or that hardware wallet, whatever it was, Trezor, and send all those Bitcoins to my private exchange. <laughs> and so this cop did a pretty good job because he even took care of IP addresses, VPNs and all that stuff. And then he transacted 81.6, let's say 82 Bitcoins to his private account. At that moment, it was only 309,000 US dollar of value. So he must have thought, hey, I will uh, 300K, that's very beautiful, you know. Nobody knows that these criminals had it because, of course, nobody knows at that moment what Bitcoin is. 2019 it was not that popular yet. So let's take those Bitcoins and just keep them in my own pocket. And nowadays, that would be like 2.4 million US dollar worth. So um, he is now officially sued for the fact that he stole 81 Bitcoins and he is still denying it. He's like, no, 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 I didn't steal any of these Bitcoins. No Bitcoins were touched by me. They are not into my wallet. It's not my wallet. I didn't send anything. It's all not me. But the police is saying, no, 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 you're lying. You're lying. You're lying. We can track all the IP addresses. And one of those IP addresses is linked to you. And he's, he's like, no, but do you know that huge hack that happened uh, to Ledger, uh, over 60,000 accounts were hacked? Probably one of those accounts was mine. So, so probably something happened with that hack to my account as well. I really didn't take those Bitcoins. Those 81 Bitcoins, I don't have them. So this is the most funny story of a corrupt agent in Australia taking almost 82 Bitcoins <laughs> during a raid. I can just imagine this guy standing in this room and seeing all those criminals in the handcuffs and then oh, noticing, hey, shit, oh, shit, mate, I might, show mate, I think that's a ledger, mate, let's take it. That's like Irish and Australian, like, uh, uh, mixed. <laughs> and he just takes 81 bitcoins. Oh, shit, probably he sold them for 300k and now he's scratching his, his head like, fuck, I could have made two and a half million. Yes, you should have trusted Bitcoin more than all your centralized authority, bosses, and economy. So for, that's to me, top-notch, funny story. Story of the day, a cop stealing 82 Bitcoins. Oh man, even that a cop knows already what those Bitcoins were in that time. 
beautiful. Thank you, Cop, for supporting Bitcoin and making some more promotion in the news for Bitcoin. <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> Let's jump into the next part. The next part is the last part of the video, guys, the inspirational part, um, the life lesson part, whatever you call it. Today's life lesson is going to be very simple. Giving gives you a lot of happiness. It's not even a quote. It's just something that I experienced in the last eight years of traveling. Whenever I give to people, poor or rich, it doesn't matter. It gives me happiness. So I will always keep giving. It's just too beautiful to be able to do this. So yes, we do have a nice capital. So yes, we do earn something every month. So yes, we do give to poor, but also to the rich people. It doesn't matter to us if you're rich or poor or, or whatever it is. We just love giving. And when we keep giving, we believe that you will always receive back. Money or Bitcoins or any other form of asset for me is energy. The more you give, the more you receive back. It's very simple. We should all be sharing a little bit more and giving a little bit more to all the other people that really need it. Because you not only become happy of it, it will come back in some kind of way as an energy. Because your happiness will lead to more happiness in your life, will lead to attracting more positive energy, people and assets to your life. It is simple as that. I truly believe this. For me, giving has become something really normal. And some people say to me like, why are you doing this? What, what is behind it? What is the catch? There is no catch. I just love to give. Like for example, this weekend, I invited 11 women that were here for some kind of a huge event. Seven days, they did like this thing. They paid a lot of money to attend that event. And then I was speaking on an event. I taught them how to you know, use Bitcoin as well. I even gave them $10 worth of Bitcoins. I made them open the wallet of Satoshi. I sent them a little bit Bitcoins, $10 worth, just to show them how it works. They were all amazed. And then at the end they said, I said, what are you gonna do like to end your whole seven day retreat? And they were like, yeah, it's, we don't know. A few of us are staying longer. I said, okay, I will invite you to Club Maya. There's a Brazil carnival. Uh, you will get all drinks and food for me. I would love to give you something back. And they were like, huh? What is there? What is the catch? I don't trust this guy, you know? <laughs> and then they come and they partied all night long. They had a lot of fun. They had drinks. They had food. And then they are all like, huh? Why is Because I love to give. I love to see you smile. I love to see you dance. I love to see all the people happy. That makes me more happy. I'm very thankful that I can do this in my life. I'm able to give to other people because, okay, I had some success. And I think when you have that success, you should always realize where you come from. And that there was also a period that you would love that other people gave to you. So you will always give back. And the moment you start to give back, that's the moment you will receive more internally happiness than ever before. I truly believe that's the case in this world. Just give as much as possible as you can <laughs> to other people. And uh, they will be giving back, guys. And even the universe. Morning. <laughs> and even the universe will be giving back. Simple as that. Giving is more powerful than being greedy, in my honest opinion. So make sure you start giving from today, guys. So that was the whole inspirational part for today. I hope you really enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy today's video, then please give the video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. What do you think about the charts, about the tips, the travel tips, everything else, and also about that last part about giving. Uh, do you want to give me something? <laughs> then there is a link down below where you can sign up to buy a bit, and you will give me some fees. And of those fees that we make over there, even there. 25% of that again will be given to poor people all over the world guys. That's how we build these schools. That's how we give to these orphanages. That's how we give food. That's how we do all that stuff of the profits we make because you use our links down below guys. Now thank you for watching. I wish you an amazing Monday, an amazing week. Enjoy Bitcoin at 52k and see you tomorrow again. Bam!